if you have been following the growth of large language model that is LLMs or you are in the space of building AI applications, artificial intelligent applications, you would have noticed that people often use something called a vector database. This is not your SQL database or in fact, it's quite different from what classically people have been using as a database. So why is this vector database exist in this large language model applications is exactly what this video is going to explain you. This video is going to break down vector database for you. One, you're going to understand what is a vector database. Two, you're going to understand what is the advantage of vector database. And three, you're going to learn about different vector databases in this landscape, especially like how this market is looking like. To start with, let's ask the question, what is a vector database? In fact, even before that, I would like to tell you what is a large language model. You all know that a large language model is a very big AI model that has got a lot of dimensions and it can use to predict the next word or it can answer a question based on the instructions that you have been given. The problem with a large language model is a large language models data is frozen at a given time period. For example, you know that ChatGPT's data is 2021 data. It doesn't have 2022. It doesn't have 2023. It's frozen at 2021. So how do you effectively use a large language model with current data is where you would need a database. And that's where a vector database comes into a picture. So what is a vector database? A vector database is a type of database that stores data as high dimensional vectors. Now, what is a high dimensional vector? If you have got a two columns, you can call it a bi-dimensional vector. If you have got multiple columns, then you can call it a high dimensional vector. It's like an n-dimensional space. Imagine you have got X and Y axis, but you have got a lot of axes like this. And in that n-dimensional space, you're storing data. So a vector database is a database that stores data as high dimensional vectors. And these vectors are nothing but mathematical representations of features or attributes of the data. Now, each vector has certain number of dimensions, which can range from tens to thousands, depending upon the complexity and granularity of the data. The vectors are usually generated by applying some kind of transformation or embedding function to the raw data. In this case, the raw data could be text, images, audio, video, or any other format. In fact, the embedding function could also be very different. It could be a machine learning model. It could be a word embedding or simply feature extraction algorithms. Now we knew what is a vector database. Let's get into why do we need vector database or what is the main advantage of vector database? The main advantage of a vector database is that it allows for fast and accurate similarity search and retrieval of data based on their vector distance or similarity. So in a vector database, if you take two different points, the closer the point, the more similar they are. The farther the point, the highly dissimilar those points are. This means instead of using a traditional method of querying database, like in your typical RDBMS relational database management system, which happens based on exact match or some kind of a where clause or a predefined condition, you can use a vector database to find the most similar or relevant data based on their semantic or contextual meaning. So instead of looking at dog is equal to dog, you can in fact see a vector database where all the animals would be clustered together or would be found together. So you know that one node closer to another node or one point closer to another point has similar meaning and it's easy for you to extract data retrieve data based on vector distance or similarity. So where can you use vector database or where do you find vector database use? Vector database can be used to find images that are similar to a given image based on the visual style, content, context of the image. It can be helpful to find documents that are similar to the given document based on the topic and sentiment, not necessarily based on the text in itself, but text, it also can play a role because you're looking at the semantic context of the text, not just the exact keyword. 
it can also help you find similar products based on the ratings and also features. So to perform a similarity search and retrieval in a vector database, you need to use a query vector that represents what is your desired information or criteria. So the query vector can be either derived from the same type of data, which is like what you have stored as vector information, or it can be from a different type of data. Like for example, your vector database might be containing images. You can get the query separately from user and use that now to get the similar images. So it could be either from the data that you have already stored or it could be something that comes from the user. But when you collect it from the user, the query vector, now you are going to use that and calculate a similarity measure to understand how to pick and what basis to pick the closest vector so that you can show the result. Now similarity measure could be different. It could be cosine similarity, Euclidean distance, Jacquard distance and a lot of other different types of distance metrics are available. So in short, Vector database is quite useful in uh, retrieving information for storing information that are not very similar to the traditional database management system where you would write a SQL query and get something that matches exactly. But here we are talking about semantic or similarity contextual search. Now, why do you need vector database for a large language model? Now, exactly like I said, large language models quite bad at producing factual data. In fact, it doesn't have factual consistency. It can be quite contradicting. It can show irrelevant information. It can be hallucinating. How do you overcome all these things? By augmenting new latest data to the large language model. This is one. The other one is, let's say you're chatting with ChatGPT. Sometimes you want to pick up where you left the chat. For example, today I'm chatting with ChatGPT about my day to day. Tomorrow I want to journal with ChatGPT or I want to talk to ChatGPT about what I was doing yesterday. Now, when that kind of situation happens, you need a long term memory retrieval system. And that is again a place where you would be using Vector Database to store what you are doing before with the large language model. So that next day you can retrieve and then restart or begin the conversation from where you left. So these are certain use cases. Why would you need Vector Database? Just to summarize, to give it factual accuracy, to give it latest or relevant information, to have long-term memory retrieval. So now having said this thing, what are the some of the examples of Vector Database today? You would have heard one of the most popular Vector Database these days is Pinecone. You would have also heard about VV8. You would have heard about ChromaDB. Venture capitalists are quite interested in Vector Database. In fact, in the very recent Victor databases has gained huge amount of funding in the recent past. If you look at few popular Victor databases, Pinecone has received 130 million, 138 million dollar funding. Zillis has re received 113 million dollar funding. Vivid has received 70 million dollar funding and Quadrant Engine has received 10 million dollar funding and this keeps on growing because a lot of venture capitalists have realized that for you to build a successful large language model, you need to have a really robust, very less latency vector database that can do a lot of things easily for the customers. And that's why all the VCs are flocking into the vector database world because large language model is not something that you can easily control, but vector database it's quite a software technology that's quite easy for them to control, which doesn't require a lot of computation as well. To be honest, you don't have to build a new model like a GPT-4 for this, but rather you need high quality global standard engineering for this to happen. So overall in this video, we learned about what is Victor database? Why do we need Victor database? Some of the Victor databases example and how the landscape is today. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any other question, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, share it with your friends, share the knowledge, happy prompting.